Okay, welcome back. Turn for that Windsor. Um, first of all, hope you had a excellent Christmas and we wish for you all the best for 2023. So let's jump into it. First, I want to say thank you to our newest patron, who is Bobsy. Really appreciate the support and we look forward to your ongoing support. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have some updates. It has been one month now since we have installed the Starlink and we are ready and ready now for moving back out to 24 at Windsor, spending more time there and getting some stuff done. And we have been doing a lot of tests over this last month. Uh, so I want to share some of the tests that we have done so far. All right, so one, what we find is that we have had no outages so far and the performance in terms of bandwidth has been consistent. Uh, we're getting, depending on where we are and how far we are from the, the, the router, we're getting between 40 megabits per second up to 300 megabits per second download speed, right? So the speed varies depending on where I am um, and how far I am from the, the router and how many walls are between myself and the router. The more walls, the slower the performance is. So if you're planning to use Starlink in a in your home and you have many rooms then expect to see as you move away from the room that the Starlink router is in expect to see the um, bandwidth kind of fall off it, it's not it's not significantly obvious um, for the basic things that you that everybody will be doing but you will see a fall off in performance if you do a speed test yeah so we got a chance to do a uh, a bandwidth test in overcast condition. The performance was about 140 megabits per second um, download, which was, I think was good, um, because I mean, it was, the, the, the skies were completely covered and blocked out. So that was a good test, but we're looking forward to get some heavy rain condition to see how uh, it affects the performance when the, 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 um, the, the, the dish is actually being inundated by rain by water so we're looking forward to that then we did the upload test and download test and the upload download test all right so first of all just try to upload our 500 meg files to the to the to the cloud and test what the bandwidth utilization looks like um, then do a download from the cloud to my computer and then i did an upload and a download at the same time right and I, I think for my purposes, the performance was good. Um, and this was being done a little bit away from the, from the router. So I was in another room and I thought the performance was good. So for this upload test, we'll just grab a bunch of files and, and drop them on, on a Google Drive. And once we drop them on the Google Drive, we we'll start to look at the um, upload performance using the Starlink um, application. Right now we're doing upload and download at the same time. So the, the, the files are being uploaded um, to Google Drive. And I'm also doing a download of two movies from Netflix um, from two different devices. So it's just showing you what the download um, performance is like during that time. So all the tests that we have done so far are just really basic tests. We have no um, tools to do really intrusive or you know extensive tests to max out the, the, the Starlink. We're just doing tests that um, demonstrate what our everyday use is like. So um, our download and upload, we're downloading a movie, uploading files and just testing that happening at the same time to see what the performance is like and for all purposes the performance is good um, under no normal circumstances those are activities that we will not be doing together it's just trying to max this thing out as, as best as possible so if there are any tools 
um, that's available at your NX technique to try to max out your network bandwidth, let us know, we will try it out. Okay. So finally got the solar generator, um, Blue Eti EB3A, right? Um, so I've started to do some tests, so I'm going to do another video on um, the results of the test. Um, but now we are ready for bush light, all right? So it's a solar generator, um, so we can actually charge it while we're in the bush, um, so we can use it during the day and we'll have enough power to charge our devices, etc., and also use the Starlink at night. So really looking forward to um, moving back out into the bush um, as soon as possible. A couple of things you should know if you decide to order uh, the Starlink is if you're going to be using it in your home, um, the performance kind of drops off if you have a lot of wall between yourself and where the Starlink router is going to be. Okay, so if you decide to put it in your living room and then you have to move to your bedroom or another room, then you lose um, some amount of performance as you um, as you move away from where the router is. To address the range issue in a house, you may want to consider getting a mesh Wi-Fi router that can extend the range and keep that signal nice and strong um, in other areas of your house, right? That's an option you can look at. Another thing you should be aware of is that out of the box, the Starlink does not allow wired connection. So if you have a computer or a device in your home, a printer, and you need to connect it using your network cable, um, out of the box, there's no option to connect a network cable, okay? So again, you will have to order um, your network adapter, okay? So if you decide that you're gonna be connecting via wire. Uh, for me, I rarely use wired connection. Most things are Wi-Fi, so I don't need a network adapter, right? So Wi-Fi for me is fine, and if Wi-Fi only for you is fine, then there's no need to get this network adapter. So is Starlink for you. Starlink is a really good option if you are living or operating in an area that, where you have limited data access. So for us, we're at 24 at Windsor, we have very limited access. So Starlink is ideal for our, our situation. Um, we use that home as well, but that's because we're just testing. If you live in an area or operate in an area where you have really good um, service from your local service provider, then Starlink may not be a, the best option. So it's really for areas where you have limited or no access, off-grid, etc. We believe that another option um, for Starlink is to support your uh, for companies is to support their DBR uh, business continuity strategy um, so that's also something that can be considered um, so you can maintain good internet access um, once you have power using your generator um, solar generator uh, or as opposed to expensive satellite phones etc a great option for search and rescue especially where um, rescue is required in remote areas where communication is still um, key to their recovery effort, their search and rescue effort. Just watch out for an, um, a follow-up video when we look at the Blue Eti EB3A um, solar generator where we are going to really look at some of the features and how it's going to benefit us while we are out in the bush and eventually we'll find out if this is the best thing for us we believe it is um, small compact lightweight um, and charged through solar so this is ideal for us out in the bush to keep us um, connected so that's my update um, again wish you all the best for the new year if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe 
give us a comment, give us a like, click that alert button and keep in touch. Alright, until next time. Bye.